honored to have you in here. I've been a fan forever. I know this, and I was going to tell you that I am very happy to be here for you and for me because I've been a fan of yours as well, but I always love the support that you give me. You've always supported me since day one. You've been one of the best people that I can hear talk about me since day one. So I just want to say thank you, man, for all the support, for being a brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My, like, my pleasure. I Listen, feel like we brothers now, you know? For sure. Yeah. Uh, I've been a fan forever. Thank like you. from way back in the day, you know, you know, your song, Y'all Must Have Forgot, I yeah. didn't forget shit. <laughs> I remember all of it, man. Yeah, it is. I remember when your fights were basically executions. Yes, exactly. There was, there, was some, <laughs> there was some years, man, where you would just like, see, how is this guy going to survive and how long? And you, you had, there was a time in your career when you were at your peak where you had devised this style that was so different than anyone else's. Very few jabs you would throw, yep. a lead hook, and no one knew how to prepare for it because there was no sparring partners that could emulate it. Right. Your speed was off the charts. Your movement was off the charts. You, I, it's, I think to this day, you're the only person in CompuBox history that went a full round without having a single punch scored on them. And they say I'm not the best defensive fighter ever. Listen, that's that's no one's I mean, ever. I mean, maybe Willie Pep might have done that back that in the day before CompuBox. But yeah. since CompuBox era, nobody has ever gone a complete round without getting a punch scored on. Them. It was now, ridiculous. You, and you tell me he ain't the best pound for pound, or he ain't the best at least defensive fighter, and we know about the offense. But I don't argue. And I just listen to what people say. No, there was a time where I always said, like, people would say, oh, but he didn't fight anybody. I'm like, the fuck he didn't. <laughs> they just couldn't They couldn't compete. That's all it was. You like, fought world champions. Like the song say, I just make them look like nobody. Y'all must have <laughs> forgot. <laughs> it's, you had a, such a strange style, man. How did you devise that style? Honestly, man, it was, like, it was a lot. My father was a fighter who was trained uh, by Sarge Johnson. In uh, the, I think, at some part of the armed services. Anyway, my father learned a lot, but he also learned a lot of things not to do. So by learning those things, he was able to give me a very good foundation. With that foundation, my father had roosters, fighting roosters when I was young. So I would watch the roosters all the time because roosters develop a pecking order. Mm. And people always talk about, you know, fighting animals, this, that. They develop a pecking order on their own anyway. They're going to do that anyway. So I would always watch them to figure out what made one the king of the pecking order, what made him better than the rest. And when I learned what that was, I, it was a few things I figured out. But once I would figure them out, I started emulating, emulating those things in my boxing style. So from fighting chickens? Yes. What, what was the thing that you noticed? Well, first of all, the one that usually was on top, he knew and he carried himself for the era, era of confidence that, he wasn't going to be messed with. So when he fight, he do a lot more faking, a lot more fainting, never let him know when he coming. All of a sudden, there he goes. And he stayed powerful. He stayed the same the whole day. And it's like anytime he went against anybody, he did the same thing. He used the same feints, same feints. And he often would do things that other chickens just didn't know to do. But that's God-given. Mm. Man didn't teach them that. God gave him that. So if you learn his characteristics, which I would watch how he would carry himself all day long, the way he carried himself when he wasn't around the other ones, the way he got rid of when the other ones came around. People say, you know, people used to think that I was very egotistical. I've never been an egotistical person, but what I was was a highly confident person. I'm God's game rooster. Mm. You feel me? You yeah. bring another one around, guess what? I'm ready to defend my turf. That's a funny thing to say to a world champion fighter who's one of the greatest of all time. You're egotistical. I mean, listen, if you're not confident, you don't get to that place. Never, ever. Impossible. Never, ever. Like, Never, ever. like You have to have a belief in yourself. It's, if, there's no other way. If you don't, who's going to believe in you? Yeah, nobody. Yeah, I, I was a fan back when you got fucked over in the Olympics, man. <laughs> God damn, did they ruin that. That was terrible. That was one of the worst Olympic decisions I've ever seen in my life. Maybe the worst. It was so bad, but it was in Korea, right? Yep. It was in Seoul, and, South Korea. And the Korean Park fighter. Si Hun. Yeah. But God damn, that was ridiculous. It was one of those fights where you're like, well, he got the gold medal. Clear. And then you see the decision, your jaw drops. You're like, mm -hmm. what is this? It hurt the sport of boxing, especially amateur boxing. It hurt it because when you can take a kid 19 years old, he defeats his rival, clearly, and you rob him, it really eliminates the 
integrity of that sport. Yeah. And you still don't go back and fix it. Mm. Nobody to this day has come back and tried to fix it. They gave me Olympic orders. They gave me the uh, Val Barker Cup, which is for the best boxer at the Olympics. Well, that's How contradiction. Crazy is that? That's How contradiction. Crazy is that? How is the best boxer here not wearing a gold medal? Yeah, it was <laughs> it was bad, but it also was in one way it made people really root for you. It was a blessing in disguise, and I understood that the the, the second day. I think I might have cried the whole first day. But the second day, well, I didn't cry until after I went to the back and asked, asked, asked the interpreter to ask him if he really thought he beat me. Because if he said yes, then he didn't know it, but he was going to get another one. <laughs> 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 yeah. But he said, no, I know I didn't win, but it wasn't my fault. It was the judges. I shook his hand, and I left. And I never had another another bad feeling towards him because he, him. he didn't do it. You feel yeah, me? You're right. For you sure. have to understand what, what it's come. But right. then I also realized that not only were the judges not necessarily, they, they ought to be blamed, but what God did was take their negative and turn it into a positive for mm. me. And look where I'm at now. It was a big talk. Like I remember when you began your career, there was a big talk of your career, how you got fucked over in the Olympics. It was not a, it wasn't a question. Not at all. There was no debate. There's not, not I never saw a single person that made an argument that he won. Nope. It was all you. And so that when you began your career, you had a lot of people rooting for you. Yes, and that was a beautiful thing. That That's the blessing uh, above all for me because to me, it was God's way of making me not put my life on idle, but turn me up on high. Yeah. I had no clue what he was doing, but that's why you just trust in God. Look where you at now. <laughs> yeah, I remember when you fought James Tony, and that was a big fight because James Tony was in his prime, and you yeah. were in your prime. And uh, again, you caught him with that leaping left hook, man, that crazy left hook, and dropped him. When you when you beat James Tony like that, I think a lot of people had to go, "Whoa!" Like he can do this to an elite, top of the food chain world champion. That's what makes a real superior athlete. Not that you can do it to guys who are beneath you, when you can do it to guys who are supposed to be your equal or yeah. above you, that's when you're really doing it. 